Uh, I need coffee. Uh, hang on. Uh, much better. There's nothing like a great cup of joe to wake you up in the morning. Gotta get that caffeine, gotta get that blood pumping. Which brings us to the topic of today. I'm gonna be going over some awesome coffee fragrances that I have in my collection. And you know what? I, I'm gonna go ahead and rank the coffee fragrances that I have in front of me. So join me. Let's caffeinate those olfactory senses and talk about some coffee fragrances that'll give you just enough pep in your step to get you through your day. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family, and welcome back to My Two Cents. I hope each and every one of you are doing fantastic today. My name is Brian, and this is the channel all about helping boost your confidence through the art of fragrance and becoming a lasting scent memory. So I wasn't going to rank these, actually, but I decided, why not? Yeah, let's go ahead and do a little rank list. Top 10 coffee fragrances. They'll give you enough pep in your step. They'll boost your confidence and boost your caffeine levels. Not really, because, then, yeah, you don't spray these on and... All of a sudden you're like, whoo, these are just some fragrances that have an awesome coffee accord in them that I think are definitely worth a whiff and sniff. Before we get into this list, what are some of your favorite uh, caffeinated fragrances? Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it's all in the grind, Sizemore. Can't be too coarse. Can't be too fine. This, my friend, is a science. Whiffs and sniffs. All right, like I said, I wasn't gonna rank these, but I've decided I'm gonna rank them. These aren't all the coffee fragrances in my collection. These are just some that I actually picked out, I've been working with and playing with, and I wasn't gonna do a top 10. I wasn't gonna rank these, but I've decided we're going to. So coming in at number 10 is a new one to my collection, and it's coming from Mansara, and it's Aoud Cafe. All right, so the reason that this comes in at number 10, it has this very interesting opening. Now, I know that there's like black currant, some citrus, some floral notes, but for some reason, those floral notes and the top notes kind of create this celery opening, kind of like celery salt. I know that sounds weird, but once you battle through that, this nice coffee note comes roaring in and it starts blending with those floral notes. You get some fruity notes in there just to give it just a slight fruitiness to it. But the coffee, it becomes like almost like a cappuccino, actually. And you have this nice ambery quality to it. So it's got a nice resin to it, but it comes a little powdery. The woods in it are a little dusty, a little powdery. Solid fragrance gets decent longevity. And again, the reason it comes in at number 10, it's not my favorite. The opening is challenging. I'm going to throw that out there. The opening is not easy to get through. It doesn't bother me that much. But as soon as I sprayed it on the first time, I was like, why does this smell like celery? It is definitely a good fragrance once that opening kind of just settles in and all the rest of the ingredients and the notes just start blending together. I just don't think it's very well blended on the very top. So coming in at number 10 is Mansara Aoud Cafe. Coming in at number nine, one of the most obnoxious bottles uh, is John Varvatos XX, Anniversary XX. I put it in a list not too long ago. The opening, again, is one of those openings that you kind of just need to wait for it because it does take a minute for all the notes to just kind of meld together and become this really nice fragrance. It's got a really nice cardamom note, so you get this sweet, spicy cardamom, and it also has a really nice coffee and a woody base to it. The coffee in this is like a very nice dark roasted coffee. Kind of like the way I like my coffee. Black, like my heart. I'm just kidding, I don't have a black heart. And the coffee in it is really nice. And it's blended very well with a nice slight sweetness that's flowing through it. The nice spices coming from that cardamom and coming from other spices and then that nice black coffee. So coming in number nine, John Varvatos Anniversary XX. Coming in at number eight. That's right, Polo Red Extreme. Now I was, I lucked out. I found this at a rack store out of box and I paid like 10 bucks for it. Yeah, 10 bucks. Um, I used to wear this as my date night fragrance back in the day and I've always enjoyed this fragrance. I just didn't pick it back up because I kind of just forgot about it. I grew up a little bit, but now I'm glad I have it back because this is coffee and blood orange. A really nice blood orange and coffee. Not the longest lasting fragrance, but I don't really care because you can find this at discounters. Keep your eye out at rack stores this holiday season because I'm sure this will start popping up again. Can't guarantee it, but it might. 
really nice dark coffee mixed with that really nice blood orange. You get a slight sweetness and some nice woodiness to it. Fantastic fragrance for the price. Again, not the longest in performance, but who cares? It will caffeinate those olfactory senses and help you become a lasting scent memory. That's the most important part. So coming in at number eight, Polo Red Extreme. Coming in at number seven, Navitus, The Embrace. Now, the reason this comes at number seven is because the coffee in this is kind of subtle. It's not just based around that coffee, though there is a really nice coffee accord in this. It's really about that creamy almond, that nice sesame. You get some like nice sweetness flowing through it. And then you're going to get like this slight bitter coffee as it starts drying down. I really enjoy this fragrance. The only reason it comes at number seven is it's not just based around coffee. There's so much more going on in this fragrance. But as a gourmand, this is one of the most unique gourmands I've ever tried. It's a nice, long-lasting fragrance that has a nice sweetness, has a very unique characteristic, and once you get into that coffee, it becomes even more unique. So, number seven, Navitus The Embrace. Coming in at number six, oh man, it's Happy Land Studios, Queer Cafe. Leather, coffee. Oh, I'm gonna spray a little bit of this because I just freaking love this fragrance. The coffee is right up top, but you also get that leather, and it's a nice leather, not medicinal. It could be a little medicinal, but that added coffee in it really kind of just rounds it out and creates this really nice leather and coffee combo. It reminds me of wearing a black leather jacket while drinking a nice black coffee. It's bitter, it's sweet, it's leathery, it's awesome. Very long-lasting fragrance, very affordable. You can get these for a stinking good price. You can get them in 30 and 50 mLs. I highly suggest checking out anything from Happy Land Studios. Price and quality, nailed it. Freaking awesome fragrances. If you like leather, if you like coffee, check out Queer Cafe. That's coming in at number six. So now we're getting into the more expensive, the more expensive coffee fragrances. And this one I was actually unsure of until I've let it sit and macerate for about six months now. And it's Minuet et Demi from Fragrance Dubois. So there's not just coffee in this. You got tobacco, you got whiskey, you have vanilla, you have some nice aromatic qualities, but the coffee really has become a little bit more pronounced ever since I've let it sit. It's a nice sweet coffee. It reminds me of smoking a nice cigar while maybe having coffee with a tad bit of whiskey in it with a couple spoonfuls of sugar and no cream. This is a really good fragrance. It's expensive, okay? You're looking at $350 for 100 ml. I definitely recommend getting a sample of this, checking this out. You can go to Fragrance Dubois website and you can get a discovery set with all their new releases. And this just so happens to be in there. Coming in at number five is Minuet at Demi. That's right, Demi Rawlings fragrance from Fragrance Dubois. Coming in at number four comes from Strangers Perfumery. And this is Roasted Coffee. It's cigarette whiskey, come and get your honey suede, baby. Oh man, this is a story. I love what Prin Rose does with Strangers Perfumery. He creates olfactory stories. He takes you places. This has got popcorn. Yeah, that's right, popcorn. It starts out kind of with this nice popcorn accord. It's like you're at the carnival, and then there's some nice fruitiness, like from apricot and dried fruits. You get this really nice suede accord. You get some honey sweetness, and then this really nice roasted coffee. Beautiful fragrance. I love the whiskey that's in it. I love the coffee that's in it. Very long-lasting fragrance, quite loud, and it's just a spectacular olfactory experience. If you want to go on an olfactory vacation, then check out Stranger's Perfumery and definitely get your nose on Roasted Coffee. Fantastic fragrance. You can get samples of this as well. You can get yourself a discovery set. That is the way that I recommend you going. But coming in at number four is Roasted Coffee, Cigarette and Whiskey. Come and get your suede and honey, baby. That is a freaking mouthful. This next one, I was not expecting at all. I didn't know if it was going to make it in this list because I really didn't think it was going to be so focused on coffee. And it comes from Icon de Parfum. And it is Arizona Sunset. AZ Sunset. I'm not going to say too much about this because my full review is going to be coming out on Saturday. This is actually my scent of the day. Jay over Icon de Parfum sent this over to me for review. Just throwing that out there. 
And I'm so glad that he did. So he told me the story behind this, and I'm not going to tell you too much, but this is all based around his stepdad. I'm going to go over three notes with you. Coffee, cigarette, shea butter. The coffee that's in this, as soon as I sprayed this on the other day when I got this in the mail, the first thing I thought of was Juan Valdez was standing behind me with his donkey pouring me a cup of Colombian coffee. It smells just like Colombian coffee. Then you have that nutty shea butter and you also have this really interesting stale cigarette. Okay, I know that doesn't sound appealing, but it's an olfactory story. And it's not overpowering cigarette smokiness or anything. It's more ashy, more like tar, like a tar resin. I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. For the price you can get these at, 50 ml, $39.95. Blows my mind. It becomes this really nice creamy coffee fragrance. This is not a tobacco fragrance. It's a coffee fragrance with a perfect amount of creamy buttery sweetness. So coming in at number three has got to be Arizona Sunset. Fantastic. Coming in at number two is going to be Elixir Atar, Mythique. Now this is a photorealistic coffee. You also have this really natural honey sweetness, like straight up earthy, raw honey. The coffee smells just like coffee grounds. You get a slight booziness and nice aromatics, fantastic fragrance, long lasting, expensive. 250 for 15 ml, but look at that color. Look at that juice. If that doesn't look like a black roasted coffee, I don't know what does. It's pricey, but one spray will last you all day and will caffeinate those olfactory senses and get you through your day. Fantastic fragrance. That's why it's coming in at number two. Coming in at number one is my favorite coffee fragrance. It's even if I took any, all my coffee fragrances and put them up against this one, this one will win. And it's kerosene. Follow. If I smelled this on somebody, it would make me want to follow them to go get a cup of coffee. This is such a realistic coffee note. It smells just like walking into a coffee bar and smelling all the wonderful smells of them roasting the coffee, then grinding the coffee, then brewing it. It's got some beautiful spices flowing through it. It's got this really nice sweetness flowing through it and the coffee. It is so good. It is scrum dilly umptious. And it honestly, when I spray this on, if I spray this on in the morning, I feel like I get a jolt of energy. Like I'm caffeinating my freaking nose hairs. It's ridiculous. Such a good fragrance. And I think 100% worth the value. $140 for 100 ml. You can tell that he is using a very high quality coffee in it as well. And it smells like my favorite type of coffee. The type of coffee that I'm drinking right now. Cafe Bustello. Oh my God. Kerosene, you definitely need to go check out. Get yourself some samples, get yourself a discovery set and check out everything from Kerosene because they're doing some phenomenal work over there. So coming in at number one is Kerosene. I will follow you. There it is guys. There are some of my favorite coffee fragrances. Not all my coffee fragrances, but just the ones that I picked out for today's episode. And so these are my top 10 for now coffee fragrances. What are some of your favorite coffee fragrances? Leave me a comment down below, but that is it for me today, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do me a favor and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.